Okay, today we're going to do number five on the 20 ISOs, and it looks a lot like a house whenever you first look at it at the beginning. And let's take a look at the dimensions first and foremost before we do anything else. So I'm going to start with the width of the object. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six squares plus two for a total of eight. So the total length of the width of the object on the front view is going to be eight units. Let's take a look at the depth of the object. And we have to be a little bit careful here because there's this part that sticks out on the other side. So let's count that up. It's going to be two units plus one, two, three, four units plus on the other side another two units. So that comes out to four plus two plus two is eight in total. And the other side is also going to be eight. So we have an eight by eight base. And the height of the house is going to be from the peak of the top of the roof down and we can count those squares on the isometric grid one two three four five so it's going to have a height of five notice that the other part of the roof doesn't have a height of five it actually looks like it goes halfway up to the top of here so we've got one two three four four and a half so this is only going to be going up half of a unit so this is going to be four point five instead of five. So it's a little bit shorter than the other one. Now let's think about how we're going to do this. You could create a block, make some cuts, and then go for a uh, chamfer on the roof and then make another chamfer on the roof, but I think that's going to be a little bit more complicated for one particular reason. This roof doesn't have the exact same ending point for the top roof and the little side roof on the side. So that means that you would have to worry about making an offset height over on this side. It can be done, it's just a little tricky to do. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try an additive approach. So we're going to create the base of the house and then after we create the base of the house we're going to then use a triangle and that triangle will make the roof. Let me show you how it works. Go back to your on shape and we're going to create in our ISOs folder a new file. Call it 20 ISOs number 5. Hit OK. If I remember correctly, this base is 8 by 8. So that's what we're going to start with. We've got our top, front, and right view. We're going to drag this over so that you guys can see it. And we're going to create a sketch from the top view and I'm going to click on this top part so that we can get the full view of just the top. Now we're going to create a sketch. I'm, I'm not usually a fan of starting in the origin unless I absolutely have to because it locks things in place uh, automatically and sometimes I don't need those things locked in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start creating the base of this house just using lines instead. So I'm going to create a line and uh, let's go back and reference. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six across, then up to over two. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go six across. So I'm going to click and then I can type in the number. So I'll just type in six and it goes that way. Notice that my line is still here. So I'm just going to line it to where it snaps straight up. And then I'm going to click and say that's two. And then the line keeps going. So middle mouse button to hand it over. Click again, and two. And now I'm probably going to have to go back and look. So my memory is not super good. All right, so we're here. We've gone across, up two, over two. Now I'm going to go up four, and then back two and up two. So back here. I'm going to go back to the line command. I'm going to go up four. One, two, three, four. Click type in 4, do the same thing, make sure you're horizontal, 2, and then up again, 2, and then at this point you've got the base of the house created so you can just connect the dots. I don't think you have to worry too much about creating a, oops, yeah, so be careful here because if you move over you're gonna be like, oh hey look that snaps right into place, but that's not where the end of it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on the thing and just type in 6. I thought it would snap into place, but apparently it did not. And then that last line we can just move all the way down, make sure that it connects. 
it should look nice and flat. When you get all the lines put together, the shape inside should highlight. Click the green checkbox whenever everything looks good. Okay, so we have our base to our house created. You could have also have made a block and then cut those down. Uh, whichever one you think is less work to you. In honesty to me, I think it'd be about the same either way. So I'm going to click the extrude button and we're only going to go up the length of the base of the house. We're not going to include the roof yet. We're going to add some triangles to include the roof part. So it looks like that's going to be one, two, three units high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to on shape. I'm going to create an extrusion, click on the shape, and I'm going to type in three for my units high. And that's going to give me a shape that looks like this. Okay, now we can go ahead and start adding in our roof. And I need to try to remember how tall this roof is. Going back to check, it looks like it's two units high. So I can use that as a reference point when making my sketch. And the roof goes to the very middle of this chunk of the block. So I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to say, all right, let's create a sketch. And we're going to create a sketch on the side of the house, on the side of the house, looking at the front. Okay. When I make a line, I, I could start making a triangle right here. but the problem is, is I don't really know how high this rectangle is going, or rectangle, I don't know how high this uh, triangle is going to be if I just start creating lines from here. So I'm going to need some type of reference geometry. Uh, fortunately, if we start, uh, Onshape will give you, if you start the line, it should snap into place at the middle, okay? So I'm going to click the middle, and I'm going to make a line that goes up. I'm going to click, and I'm going to say, that's going to be three units high. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and just connect the dots from the top to the bottom, and that will create the first side of my house. Go ahead and make a line that goes across this way, because remember, you're going to need your full triangle for the sketch. You can't just make the two on top and be like, all right, we're going to make this shape, because on shape is going to be like, you only have two lines. You don't even have a triangle. And then connect these two dots, Okay, and we've got two shapes. Now, if you want to, you can delete this line that we made at the very beginning using this pair of scissors called trim. You can cut this out and then you just have the triangle. If you tried to extrude with the line there, you might have to click in two different areas, but I don't think it would break anything. So there's a little scissors up here. You can use that and you can trim before you leave the sketch. Once you click the green check mark, you'd have to go back in and edit the sketch if you didn't do that in advance. So we're going to go back to the front view. See, I've got a triangle that's set up there now. All I need to do is extrude that triangle all the way across. If I look back, I know that my base is 2 plus 4 plus 2, uh, so the depth of this object is going to be 8. When I make my extrusion, we're going to make our extrusion to go 8 that direction. So I'm going to extrude and click on the triangle. It wants to push it this way, so I can just click this swap on the right below the face of sketch 2 and it will say opposite direction. You can click on that and it will make it go in the opposite direction. I'm going to make this 8 deep and it should cover the entire length of your house. Okay. Now we're going to do the exact same thing and we're going to do that to the front or I'm sorry the, the right view or the side of the house. Okay. So we're going to create a sketch and we're going to click on this side of the house and go to the right view and I'm going to make another triangle. Remember, I don't know uh, exactly how high the triangle is if I start on the left or the right side, but I can start in the middle and I can say, okay, you're going to be two and a half high. So I'm going to click, I'm going to click 2.5 and then hit enter. And then I'm going to make my triangle by just creating lines that go across. Click and click and don't forget the bottom all the way across the bottom. There it goes. Click. All right. Now, you know that you did it right if, after you trim, it should just make a nice little triangle. And you should be able to see all the parts of the line. Since there was a middle part, it cut this in half. But these are still part of the same line. So we have the whole triangle here. So if I hit Finish, my sketch, the green check mark, and go back to my home view, I can see that I have a triangle right here. And notice that it has the whole region selected if I 
put my mouse over the face of that part. So we're going to extrude now. I'm going to click the extrude button and this time I think I'm just going to click, oh looks like it's going the wrong way. Let's click this flip to get the arrow going this way and I'm just going to drag that arrow to where it goes inside the house. Don't push it too far over or you'll have a, little, uh, you'll have a problem. Just move it to about you know halfway inside and then hit finish sketch and you are good to go. You have a house. Congratulations. This is 20 ISOs number five.